Reports from Committee, Joint Standing Committee on Treaties. I call the Honourable Member for Longman. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. On behalf of the Joint Standing Committee on Treaties, I present the Committee's report entitled Report 138, Treaties tabled on the 11th and 12th of December 2013, 20 January 2014, and referred on the 15th of January 2014. And I ask leave of the House to make a short statement in connection with the report. It's, I understand. Uh, the member for Watson. To leave is granted. Leave is granted. I thank the member for Watson. Leave is granted, and the member for Longman has the call. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Today, I present the Joint Standing Committee's uh, re Treaties Report 138. The report contains the committee's views on the following five proposed treaties: the Convention between Australia and the Swiss Confederation for the avoidance of double taxation with respect to taxes on income with protocol, the Arms Trade Treaty. The agreement between the Government of Australia and the Government of the Oriental Republic of Uruguay on the exchange of information with respect to taxes. The agreement on the scientific and technological cooperation between the Government of Australia and the Government of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. And the exchange of notes constituting an agreement between the Government of the United States of America and the Government of Australia to amend the agreement concerning space vehicle tracking and communication facilities of 29 May 1980. Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to particularly single out the Arms Trade Treaty because of its significance to the international community and the leading role Australia played in the negotiation of this treaty. Mr Deputy Speaker, the Arms Trade Treaty is the first ever binding international agreement governing the trade in conventional weapons. This trade is estimated to be worth $70 billion annually and represents a major barrier to the peace and well-being of people across the globe. The treaty will establish a common global standard for regulation of the international trade in conventional arms. It encourages state parties to trade conventional weapons more responsibly and more transparently, deterring their diversion to the illicit market and preventing their destabilising impact on peace and security. Mr Deputy Speaker, Australia has been an active supporter of the development of the proposed treaty. In 2009, Australia co-authored and co-sponsored the United Nations General Assembly Resolution 6448, which called for a conference to be convened in 2012 to elaborate on a legally binding instrument on the highest possible common international standards for the transfer of conventional arms. Australia was also elected vice chair of the preparatory committee tasked with preparing an arms trade treaty in July 2010. And finally, Australia's ambassador to the UN in Geneva was appointed president of the conference convened in March 2013 to negotiate a final text. Mr Deputy Speaker, the treaty will require signatories to develop national mechanisms to regulate the export of conventional weapons. Each signatory will be required to keep a national control list of weapons covered by the regulatory mechanisms. Weapons on the control list will be prohibited from being exported when the exporter would one, breach a UN Security Council arms embargo or similar measure, two, breach an international treaty to which the exporting state is signatory, or three, occur where a party has, has knowledge at the time of authorisation that the weapons would be used in the commission of genocide, crimes against humanity and certain war crimes. Mr Deputy Speaker, the committee recognises that this treaty is only the beginning of the process of controlling the proliferation of conventional weapons. The committee also recognises that the treaty as it stands has some further potential for more significant oversight. For example, major conventional weapons exporters such as China and Russia have neither participated in the developing of this treaty nor have they supported it. While the United States, the world's largest exporter of conventional weapons, has signed the treaty, the committee is aware of the domestic US politics is pushing against its ratification. In addition, the treaty contains no enforcement provisions, relying instead on improving the transparency of international arms trading as a mechanism for encouraging compliance. Finally, the committee notes that the treaty does not, not include a fully comprehensive list of conventional weapons. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, despite these limitations, the Arms Trade Treaty is an important step towards improving humanitarian conditions and the prospects for peace internationally. The Arms Trade Treaty represents a significant step, 
as the first ever binding international agreement governing the trade in conventional weapons. The committee notes the important and active role Australia has played in the negotiation of this landmark treaty. The committee recommends that binding treaty action should be taken. The committee has also recommended that binding treaty action be taken in relation to the four other treaties examined in this report. Mr Deputy Speaker, on behalf of the committee, I commend the report to the House.